today I'm here live at the Business Expo at CRR Radio. I have with me host Mr. John Perry and a very special guest. His name is Mr. Jim Madison. But before we talk to Mr. Madison, I just want to wish everyone a very happy Caribbean American Heritage Month, happy Men's Health Month, happy Juneteenth, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. My name is Joan Edge Hill. I am the president of the Jamaican American Association. I'm also a poet and author. Now don't forget to log in to CRRFM by using our app. Today we have with us live Mr. Jim Madison. He is the sole publisher of the Florida Sun newspaper. Mr. Madison graduated from HBCU University, North Carolina, A and T State. He served in the United Air Force and recently released his recent book, right? And it's called From the Beginning. Welcome to Community Chat, Mr. Madison. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Great. Tell us, are you a native of Central Florida? No, I'm not. I'm a native of North Carolina. Tell us a little bit about North Carolina. Well, North Carolina has three distinct regions. I was born in uh, what they call the mountain region. Then you have the uh, uh, Piedmont and central areas of North Carolina. Excellent. So when did you decide to move to Florida? Well, I really didn't decide. I, I, I ended up in Florida by way of the United States Air Force. Oh, okay. So incidental. <laughs> yes, were. incidental. Okay. Now you mentioned that you attended and graduated from an HBCU, which is a historical black college. Um, would you tell us, are there benefits, in your opinion, of attending an HBCU college or university? Uh, perhaps there is some advantages. However, the reason I attended uh, predominantly uh, on HBC University at the time mm -hmm. when I graduated, uh, it was back during the time where segregation was still pretty much uh, yes. in this country. So most of the uh, blacks at that time automatically uh, submitted applications to historically black colleges and universities. Was it less expensive? Oh, less expensive. But as far as it's hard to determine whether there was an advantage because uh, mm -hmm. later on in my last year of high school, a uh, few of us were allowed to integrate the local high school. Oh, I so see. I had an opportunity to uh, compete back and forth, if you want to use it that way, right. with white students. So I feel as though uh, there was all the equal opportunities also apply to the uh, University of North Carolina or North Carolina State. Excellent. Thank you. Now, Mr. Madison, you are also a veteran of the United Air Force. Thank you, by the way, for your service. Now, you served in Vietnam, which I know was a very difficult war, at least I hear so. Would you care to share some of your experiences? Well, um, I was in the, it's called uh, the Vietnam Theater, which also includes uh, uh, Laos and Thailand. And I was happened to be stationed in Thailand, but we went back and forth into Vietnam. and. On the flight into Vietnam, we were always under fire. Uh, also, uh, the, the, the Mekong River into uh, uh, the areas right across from the base where we were stationed, even though we were Air Force, we were, the base was constantly under attack. But we were able to, uh, but I, I don't have any, uh, let's say like the Army would have an experience like that. But it was, uh, in, in the Vietnam theater. Okay, thank you, Mr. Madison, for your service again. Now, as the sole publisher of the newspaper, The Florida Sun, you must be very busy. I have two parts to this question. What are some of the pros and cons of running a newspaper? Well, uh, speaking of pros and cons, uh, I'd rather answer it this way. 
Uh, when most people think about a newspaper, they only think about the journalism side of the paper. Yeah. What? Uh, but the journalists and the writers have to be paid. So basically, you also have a sales side to the newspaper. Uh, also included would be distribution. So it's not a real simple, they're, uh, they're both pros and cons, and, and if you like what you do, uh, actually it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's challenging because of all the different uh, facets of a newspaper. Excellent. Okay, now, what advice would you give to someone who had the idea that they want to publish their own newspaper? Uh, be willing to deal with different aspects. Like, as I mentioned, uh, you also have to deal with writers, <laughs> you got to deal with salespeople, yeah. and you have to deal with distributors. So uh, unlike retail, where it's partly where you maybe have only one focus, the newspaper requires that you focus in, in many different areas at the same time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, last week you attended our, our health, health fair, fair, the Jamaican American, American Association of Central, Central Florida. Florida. We, had we had a health fair, fair at, at the, the Multicultural, Multicultural Center, Center in Orlando, Orlando Pine, Pine Hills, Hills. And, and it was, it was a, a pleasure, pleasure to see you there. there. What, what was, was your, your overall, overall impression, impression of the event? Well, I applaud the Jamaican Association of Central Florida for uh, putting on an event such as this. One of the biggest problems, uh, especially in the black community, is uh, health and looking out for your health. They should be uh, at all times concerned and know what their blood pressure is. They need to go on against uh, their blood sugar getting too high because uh, diabetes in the black community has been very, uh, uh, has gone quite a uh, ways in terms of uh, the black community itself. So I, I think more and more of those helpers could be presented. And I think what the, uh, what the Jamaican Association did was uh, very good. And I enjoyed myself at the uh, event. Thank you. There were quite a lot of vendors there, and we look forward to you collaborating with us again. We do this every year, so we're looking forward to seeing you there again. And thank you for coming. Now, you are an author, and you most recently released your book, From the Beginning, which I'm reading. So please share with our audience what your purpose was for writing the book, and, and what, what you, you hope, hope the readers will take away from reading it. Well, basically looking at the way the world is today and the, the state of, of our nation, not just in the United States, but currently all over the world. Uh, I've been involved in the church since I was a child and looking at how things were, I look back and I read the Genesis account of uh, the creation. Yes. And uh, it, it appears to me, well, the people, uh, well, let me point this out. I'm not a, um, a member of the clergy or a Bible scholar uh, or a pastor of a church. So I figured that just a regular person writing about the creation from a biblical standpoint may make sense to some people. Yes. So I felt like it was something that I could do. And with the state of the world, uh, I can see where if uh, from the beginning, the way things were, if we could get back to some of that, because basically uh, the point I was saying that uh, it doesn't matter who you are, one thing for sure, you'll die. <laughs> Why do you believe what happens after you die? Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision. Yes, man. Uh, consequently, um, I was just trying to make a point that that is something you can't just be on the sideline, and that uh, it makes sense to point that out to people and let them make their own decision. Excellent. I like the way you wrote it. You know, from your perspective. And, and you, you, you explained, explained everything, you know, you know so, so that, that everyone, everyone can understand. understand. And, I, and think I think that's important. important. I think sometimes, sometimes we make the Bible too complicated. complicated. You know, we, we want to show, show that we are so eloquent and understanding everything. everything. And, and um, by, by putting, putting it that, that way, 
we can all understand it, right? And we can all follow along. In fact, I wrote a book of poetry and that's the way I wrote it. I think I wrote it very simply from my perspective, things I saw, experiences I've had and try not to make it too complicated. But especially the Bible, we don't want to complicate it. We want to simply say what the Lord has for us and let people gain their own understanding, right? So thank you. Do you have any other books that you've written? Yeah, uh, fictional books. About Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, can you tell us about any of those? Well, one was one of my Vietnam, uh, Vietnam experience that was written back in the early 70s. Oh, so you made it into a fiction story. Right, yeah. With fiction. characters and all of that. Yes. That sounds cool. Now, <laughs> what's the title of that one? Uh, Heirs of Truth. Errors of, Errors of truth. truth. Wow. Okay. And so look out for that one, guy. And one that involved when the uh, the whole uh, crack cocaine started mm. back in the eighties. I did something on that, but also what was happening at the time. Mr. Matt, Great. Good afternoon again, John Perry here. Uh, thank you so much for your service. I happen to be a fellow veteran myself, Air Force also. Thank uh, you. You know, one of the questions that I have for you is the state of America today, particularly when it comes to our veterans. We know that we have quite a few Vietnam veterans that when they came back, they weren't honored or anything like that. They were marginalized, so to speak. Could you uh, go ahead and elaborate somewhat uh, as far as the state of affairs today when it comes to veteran services? When it comes to veteran services right now, it's seen a greatly improved. Okay. Everywhere you go, people say, thank you for your service. Yes, yes. Sometimes it's a war. Uh, Seems like it's overly done. Right. However, based on what happened during that Vietnam area, how service per persons were uh, shown such disdain right. that yes. took that to actually make up for it. Now, do you yourself, do you uh, participate as far as the medical uh, benefits that supported the veterans? No, fortunately, no. Okay. fortunately I've been in pretty good health and to the normal Medicare services, no, I've done that. Well, you pointed out something which is uh, quite evident today. More veterans are being honored yes. by the civilian populace. But let me also say that the government themselves is doing a wonderful job as far as, I mean, the job is not over by no means, mm -hmm. but it's getting much better. I've been in the, the system now for about 15 years, and I can honestly say that I've seen the improvements of the services you know that the government has given the problem that i have now is veterans themselves are not take partaking of those services we have so many homeless veterans now yeah a lot of veterans that are out there in, in the communities now that are suffering that won't take advantage of it so that's that's just a point i wanted to make yes that's disappointing isn't it Yes, yes, but I'm glad things have improved. And yeah. thank you, too, for your service. And to everyone out there who served, thank you. May God bless each and every one of you. We appreciate you. All right, now June. We're in June. And apart from being Caribbean Heritage, American Heritage Month, and a lot of other things, June is uh, Men's Health Month. Not sure if you all know that. It also includes mental health. Now, we know that men are known for not going to the doctors as they should, not taking good care of themselves. And so we want to encourage our men to listen to your wives, listen to the women in your lives, and go to the doctor, get checked out. So my question for you, Mr. Madison, and for you, Mr. Perry, perhaps, do you have any advice for the men who may be listening? Well, my advice to the man was to uh, either accept a healthy diet, just stop relying on burgers and fries, then you wouldn't have to go to the doctor as well. It's just uh, a little self-discipline. I mean, the research has been done. Certain foods you should eat, certain others you should not eat as often. And I see too much uh, where they don't just like to serve, like when they mention about uh, bet you're not taking advantage of certain services. The same way I think a lot of men are not taking advantage of the resources done and just ended up with a triple, double and triple bypass surgery. 
uh, when that can be avoided. So um, you think the major reason is food, the content of the food. What about this macho uh, <laughs> syndrome where some men feel that they don't need to see a doctor. They don't need to do what women do quite often. You go and check out for everything. Do you, you, you think that plays a part? Because you, you mentioned one word there, which is prostate cancer. And I happen to be a cancer survivor myself, prostate cancer. And I attribute my survivability on my wife and also the VA. The VA, once you get in the system, they were so persistent. They were very, very persistent as far as the annual checkups that you make or the quarterly checkups that you would do. And also the wives or the, you know, not everybody's married. But those significant others that are involved in your life, it's so very important for them to push because we are very persistent and not going. And I'm telling you, when it comes to prostate cancer, you have to, you know, you have to do the checks. You have to do the checks. And men were very resistant to it in years past, mainly because it was somewhat evasive. Uh, the, the methods of testing now are somewhat less evasive. Uh, so, uh, so I would, I would encourage, encourage more men, men to go and, you know, you know checking, checking out, out is key. Yes. You know, you know symptoms, symptoms, once you start seeing some of the symptoms, symptoms sometimes it's a little bit too late for that. It's true. You know, so, so more, more annual, annual checkups, checkups is the key. key. I totally agree with that. For example, you mentioned diabetes, but I find another big one is um, blood, um, high blood pressure. That's a big one with men. And my son, who's a young man, found that his blood pressure was very high. And he only went because he had such bad headaches and, you know, the symptoms started to cause him to be concerned. But he should have been going to the doctor anyway, is what I tell him, for regular checkups. You know? That's not like that, though. You can get a blood pressure monitor. Exactly. I check mine. That's easy. Yeah. 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 That's, that's easy to do. Something that simple, yeah. Get yourself a monitor, guys. You know, they have them on the wrist. They have them for the arm, automatic. You don't have to be concerned about reading it. It's very simple. Let's revisit something that was said also, and it really has to do with diet. As far as eating today, you have to be intentional about what you eat. You know, uh, you can't just go out there right now, even on 192, and get anything, in my opinion, fast food that's healthy. And even when you go into grocery stores, you got to be so careful of what you're picking out to eat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The diet that we had, and we have had over the years as blacks and everything like that, it, it's not survivable today, guys. Mm -hmm. We have to be intentional about what we eat. And you know, last week I know, or was it the week before, you brought on a gentleman, the farmer. Oh yes. Out of Fort Pierce. Yes, yes. So, so there are people around that's that's raising nutritionist uh, exactly. food and all that, and exactly. we have to seek them out, and those are the foods that we have to seek. Yes, I totally agree with that. So, yes, food de definitely plays a part. In high cholesterol as well, that's another one, another thing. You know, and it's hidden. It's hidden in things like cookies. You wouldn't think that that could be a problem. You know, so you really have to read it. Yes, you have to read read it. It's yeah. very difficult, you know, after a few years back when we had this whole thing about eating too much red meat and so mm -hmm. I thought America was catching on that we want to eat healthier. Yeah. And like you mentioned, it's very tough and so difficult to, to, to find healthy foods. We look at the store. There's that, and there's breaking bad habits. That's kind of difficult, too. It is, yeah. You know, you almost get conditioned into eating right. a certain way, so you have to really work hard at it. Well, you know, we've been carnivores all our lives, <laughs> and for somebody to tell me after 68 years, you know, you got to start eating, no. you know, cauliflower and collard greens, and that's it. That's kind of tough, but it's all things in moderation. Right. But well, and there are some vegetables I like, and uh, very few I don't. Right. Right. Figure out the ones that you do. Right. right. And nothing against the burgers, we just don't eat them every day. Every day, yeah, once in a while, yeah. And, and red meat once in a while, you know, no more than twice a week, if that much, maybe once a week, if you can. And mix it up. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you guys so much. We, we're a little earlier than usual. Well, so you know, wanted... well, yeah, I've got a gentleman here that he looks like a grandfather, uh, so therefore I'm not insulting him. What is your thoughts on um, Father's Day, you know, the role of fathers today? 
in our society. We have Father's Day coming up tomorrow. Um, my opinion, you know, a lot of men in the homes right now are being marginalized. We're not, uh, we're not, you know, we're not being seeked out for counselors we once were. Um, and our roles in the house seems to be diminishing. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the same way I think it should be emphasized. The government, I think, has a lot to do with that for some reason. But if we go back to the traditional one, especially in the black family, when the father was there, right. yeah. and for some reason there's, there's controversy over the reason why. But I think as a black community, it would be uh, prudent to find out why. Yes. And, and what we're in the newspaper, what we will attempt to do is survey people right. and try to find out what the problem is and what would be the proper solutions. Yeah. Well, well some, some say, say it has something, something to do with slavery. The well, it all has to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> right, honest with you. I mean, most, most we're, we're still yeah. being controlled now. I remember, you know, times in New York where the male in the house was discouraged. You know, a woman would get more money if she did not have exactly. a male in the house. Exactly. Some, some variation of that still exists today. You know, whereby, you know, incarceration look at the number of incarceration that's happening you know amongst us are we that bad of a people <laughs> you know, bad and representation i think as well it is. And like you say we're not represented yeah we're not represented correctly yeah. you know the government has to do with that in other words right. like say, right. if you don't have a male there you're getting more money yes yes yes, right. yes. and even teenagers are sent to jail right. but again well, you know it comes to a fact or a point though that we have a responsibility too. Yes, you know, we, do. we have identified it and we have said that this is the cause of it. Right. So turn. Well, it you know about a storm that's coming. Are you gonna do mm -hmm. some preparation for it or not? You know, you are gonna do some preparation for it. You know. What I mean? Right. So we do have a responsibility ourselves. Right. You know, Once we know, we need to do something. We need to do something about yes. it. Yes. Thank All you. Right. Thank Anything you so much. Anything else you'd like to leave us with? I thank you, Mr. Madison. Madison. <laughs> thank, thank you, you for coming. coming. Excellent. Let's, Let's get, get some, some more information on your periodic. Yeah. And how can oh, they reach you? Uh, my email is madisonjim at aol.com. Uh, the newspaper now is distributed here in Kissimmee. So uh, I encourage everyone to pick up a copy. And all the relevant information is in the newspaper itself. Any last word, John? Well, just to say thank you for giving us an opportunity again to bring uh, someone to community chat who is really has a great deal of experience. And we loved having you here, sir. Would you like your partner to say something? Oh, yeah. Linda, would you like to? Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Sure. I'm Linda Walters. I'm a contributing writer to the Florida Sun Review. All right. And I've been with them for about the last uh, 15 maybe years. It's been a while. 16. 16. Okay. All right. I knew I was close. <laughs> I was the state of uh, printed material. Is printed material still dominant or digital and is taking over everything now? Well, digital has a very specific um, positioning, but the printed material also follows it up and supplements it and actually solidifies it because people still like to have a hard copy of, yes. you know, um, editorial that they can look through, they can touch, and they can just sort of refer to. Whereas online, you're on it, and then you go away from it, and it's not there. You know, it's so funny you should say that, because I do believe that, because not all seniors, as an example, uh, you know, are computer literate. That's you right. know, they, That's they, right. they still depend on the Absolutely. written word. Absolutely, yes. You know what I mean? I, I was listening to somebody just the other day, and he was talking about digital books. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you're you're on the same page forever, <laughs> you know. Whereby, if you're reading the Bible or you're reading a periodically, yes, you yes, can turn the page. Turn the you page. know, when you're halfway there, you know what I mean. Absolutely. With the printed word, you really don't see it. You know? Yes, but the digital age is definitely upon us. We right. must accept it yes, and move do. forward with it because its reach right. far 
right. succeeding, right. yes. A bit the, more cost efficient also. You can't deny Absolutely. that. You know what I mean? Right. Printing is still expensive and everything like that. But mm -hmm. We do appreciate all that you guys are doing and uh, we Thank welcome you. you back again. You know. Thank uh, you so much for having us. Uh, all right. First and foremost, and congratulations um, to both the station itself, but also to the Caribbean Network for being able to pull together a cohesive element of representation. Yes, right. that is so very yes, important. Proud of them. Well, one of the words that was mentioned today, and I think um, we can actually say it, is consistency. So we're trying to be as consistent as we possibly can. Yes. Very important. All right. Very you know, important, yes. I'm so. from New York, so um, I started my writing career actually with um, the Amsterdam News, which prints out of Harlem. It still prints. Mm -hmm. And then I moved over to do more writing because they needed the writers with Caribbean Life newspaper out of Brooklyn, New York which still prints and when i go i was recently in new york for mother's day and uh, we went into a jamaican restaurant to pick up food and that's where you can find the newspapers and right. i literally picked up caribbean <laughs> life and yeah. held it to my chest uh, yeah. and was so proud yes. that it is still in publication yeah. it does extremely well the readership has only increased because, of course, the population in right. New York is right. heavily concentrated in the Caribbean. But the fact that you guys are here and you are working on increasing your market share right. and hopefully the Florida Sun Review will also be able to assist you in doing that. So we look forward thank to you. that. What Thanks part of New York, by the way? That's I'm right. originally Brooklyn. from Brooklyn. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn in the house, everybody. Brooklyn's in the house. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. But also, time. Westchester's in the house, too. Mount Vernon is here. Okay. <laughs> Listen, money earning Mount Vernon. Money earning Mount Vernon. There, there, there you go. So, and the boogie down Bronx. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Not Thank like you. not like being uh, from New York though culturally. Heritage, okay, so I do not except except it by an extended version. My right. husband was um, his parents were from Panama and Jamaica. Oh, okay. His yes. mom is Panamanian. His father yes. was from Kingston. Very close neighbors. I, yes. I, I I heard a little birdie had told me they told me about these clubs jcc and ja whatever uh -huh. they're giving out honorary really caribbean i like that okay I, I so, definitely <laughs> so if you know somebody if you know somebody get in touch with somebody okay all right thank, thank you very much thank you all right uh,